My mother had finally saved up enough money for us to get our own place, and we moved next door to a bar called the King's X, a local hangout for the worst people possible. We had a metal bat that lived at our front door, and I couldn't possibly tell you the number of times I had to run outside with that fucking thing and bang it on the ground to scare off some awful mess pissing on my front door or some disgusting trolls fucking in the weeds next to my house. People love to pull up to the King's X and rev their engines for 45 minutes and play the latest Dr. Dre track at the highest volume possible without ripping through the space-time continuum. The bass would shake the house, rattling the windows and keeping me up at night. How lucky my mother was to be deaf. How awful our landlords were to rent her this place and not to mention the decibel level that her two hearing sons would have to deal with. We got used to it. My little rickety house was stationed about a mile from the Rockridge BART station the home base for me and my friends. One mile, so far. I was fat and lazy and hated to walk. I slumped myself over to the 59A bus stop and waited for the bus to come. I loved to hitchhike. I honestly don't know why, but every time I'd sit there, I would throw up my thumb and start asking people if they were going my way. You think I could get a ride? Most people stared straight ahead as if they were deaf, at which point I would sign to them, hey, you think I could get a ride? And laugh to myself only to myself, this little life of mine. There are moments in a life that make you think that maybe there's a thread of meaning through this bumbling little experience, seconds and inches that peel open the epidermis of the universe to reveal the intricate nervous system of interconnectivity that lies within, things that make you say there might be something to this God thing after all, little God moments. My God moment puttered up to me in a 1970 Datsun 510. It was a rusty thing with primer gray splotted rough blue paint, a little wagon that looked like it was going to self-destruct into a thousand pieces at any second. I pulled up, it pulled up and stopped right in front of my bus stop. Inside was a hippie angel. I mean, this guy looked like a fucking R. Crumb character, a Frank Zappa of a man with dirty curly hair cascading down his shoulders, gray streaks flecking his bushiness, showing his age. Next to him, Next to him was a man ripped directly from a Jimi Hendrix concert photo, a withered old hippie wanderer whose leather headband might not have been removed for years, a thousand years, a million, namaste. <laughs> Zappa turned his head to me and smiled, a big, white, greedy smile, all love. I did my hand like, roll down the window. The man Buddha complied. Hey, I said. Hey, brother. We were brothers. You guys heading to Rockridge Park? I knew the answer. We are now. Zappa popped the door open and slid his seat forward. Jump in. I leapt. Some people just won't understand these things. I could sense the electric current in the air, feel the power. I sat down on the lamb's wool seat cover. No introductions were made. None were needed. We'd known each other forever, lifetimes. Led Zeppelin was blaring from the eight track stereo. Of course it was. Was I in the past? Hey, brother, you smoke? The Hendrix experience handed me a fat, beautiful joint filled with adult weed. Do I? I sucked in hard. I coughed out harder. Easy there, brother. Adult weed. Somehow, no matter how good the weed was back then, some trick or spe of nature or special club allowed the adults to get the best weed in the world. <laughs> Parents' stashes were filled with otherworldly shit. Crystal-crusted indica and Maui Waui, the best shit. Only one thing was more powerful than adult weed, adult hippie weed. Oh Lord, give me strength. I smoked that joint and passed it back to Zappa who put his hand up in supplication like Jesus. No way, keep smoking, you only have it for a mile. We smoke all day. He laughed like Santa. He laughed like the Buddha. He laughed like the universe. I sat there laughing, smoking. My mouth turned to a desert. The desiccating hand of Cottonmouth swabbed my tongue, and just at that moment, when I could take no more, Hendrix turned back to me and smiled. Hey, you want a beer? I'd love one. Nothing sounds better. He handed me a Red Hook Extra Special Bitter, my favorite beer. I never drank nice beer, but today I drank like an alcoholic king. The malt washed away my dryness. Hops washed away my sins. We pulled up to Bart, my mind blown, my joint cashed, my beer drunk. What a 10 minutes. I oozed out of the car and said my goodbyes. Zappa pulled out a pack of smokes. Oh my God, are those Newports? <laughs> Newports, my cigarette, my favorite. Not a common smoke of the hippie. 
more a staple of, well, you know. This couldn't be a fucking Newport? Yeah, brother, you want one? I'd love one. I trembled as a tear welled up in my eye. Here you go. Zappa handed me a smoke, and I stared at it, waiting to wake up in Kansas. I looked up. The Datsun was gone. The greatest moment of my life had passed. I lit the Newport and offered it up to Great Spirit. I smoked in enlightenment. If only every day were like this. Of course, it wasn't. That moment was the best life could ever be for me. The pinnacle. The peak of my experience in the new drug world I'd entered. I'd looked back at that car ride over the years and wished that I could go back. But of course, right before the peak begins the descent. That's it. John, what time is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, that feels like a nice place to stop. Um, you get, did we enjoy? Did, did you guys enjoy the stories? <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'll be. I have the book for sale at the, in the bookstore, and if anybody wants to get one, I'll be signing them and stuff, and you can come say hi. And um, I really appreciate you guys being here. Um, it, it's like really meaningful to be to be in a place that's so far away and have so many people here supporting me. Some of you know who I am, I guess, and some of you don't know who I am. But I really want to appreciate um, you sharing this space with me, this place and time. And um, and I hope that you get the book and that you enjoy it. And uh, thanks a lot for having me. I appreciate it. And I want to thank John Brummett and the Mocha for hosting me. I really appreciate that too. Thanks so much. <laughs>